today's topic is counters. It's another sequential circuit and application of a flip-flop. So in counters, there are two types of counters. One is ripple counter, also called asynchronous counter. And another is synchronous counter, also called parallel counter. Now we'll start with the first counter, which is a ripple counter or a synchronous counter. If you see, if I draw a counter and it is counting, count, start with 0, 0, 0, it's a 4 bit counter, so it can count up till 15. the counting and up to what it can count and all the inputs are 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, this is 12, 13, 14 and the last is 15. So after this it will reset, it will set to all the flip flops will be 0, 0, 0. This is what we want. A counter which goes through, or you can say, a circuit which goes through a number of sequence of states on the incoming of an input pulse, it is called a counter. So this is a counter. It is counting from 0 to 15. It's a sequence of states. And when there is a pulse, it counts. So we have two types of counters. It is counting. It is an asynchronous counter. It is not in your, all the flip flops, they are not in synchronized with the clock. The output of one flip flop clocks the another flip flop. That is what is happening. So now you can see that your D is LSD. It is toggling on every clock pulse. D is toggling on every clock pulse. So what we can do is, we can make a you can you make use of this flip flop or you can make use of any other flip flop. So JK has a toggling facility, T has a toggling facility. So it's better to use JK or T. So when J and K they are one, it will toggle. Which clock you want to use, we have to decide. It should toggle on every clock pulse. So, it can be negative edge triggered, it can be positive edge triggered. But, all the flip flops, they should trigger on the same clock edge. Ye now ki change ho hai. So, this is a clock. What is the second one? Let's take on in two inputs only. So this is 0 to 1. It toggles on every clock edge. So if you we give a clock, these are 1, 1. So whenever there is a clock, this will toggle. Simple. What When this toggles, this toggles when D goes from 1 to 0. When D output goes to 1 to 0, your C toggles. When this goes from 1 to 0, C toggles. When this goes from, that means your there should be a negative clock edge. The output of D is fed as a clock to the next flip flop because they are not in synchronization with the clock. When they are not in synchronization with the clock, then the output of one flip flop triggers the next flip flop. So this is what is happening. So we should have a negative edge triggered flip flop. 
if you see this when this goes from 1 to 0 this gets toggled when this goes from 1 to 0 this gets toggled then when this goes from 1 to 0 this gets toggled so toggling is occurring this is toggling when this goes from 1 to 0 so what we can do is When C goes from 1 to 0, B toggles. So you can check it. This always toggles. So, jab bhi clock aayegi, ye clock lagalo. Whenever clock first clock comes, it toggles. Baki save rahenge. B ki value zero hai. B ki value zero to one ja rahi hai. So, ye toggle nahi hoga. Isko toggle karne ke liye clock kya karna chahiye? One to zero. So, output same rahegi. C zero hi rahegi. C ki value zero hai. So, this will not toggle. So, B will remain same. B ki value 0 hai, so A will not toggle, so that also remains same. Then on the next blockage, this will again toggle, so it goes from 1 to 0. This goes from 1 to 0. Jaisi ye 1 to 0 jayega, there is a clock here, so this is 1 1, that means the value of C should toggle. So the value of C will toggle from 0 to 1. Similarly, for others. So, the, in this way, we have made a asynchronous counter in which the output of one flip-flop is actually triggering the next flip-flop, acting as an input pulse to the next flip-flop, to toggle or not to toggle. And you can see that the counter is counting up. So, it is a asynchronous up counter. Asynchronous up counter and the counter is counting for 16 states. So it is a mod 16 asynchronous up counter. So state number of states tell you the mod of the counter. So similarly that means if you have 3 flip flops, 4 flip flops you can count up to 2 raised to power 4 16. If you have 3 flip flops you can count from 2 raised to power 3. That means 8 states. If it is two, uh, 5 flip flops, you can count from 2 raised to power 5, that is 32. So, number of flip flops decide what will be the mod of the counter, how many states it will count. So, if it, this is a mod 16 asynchronous up counter, this is what it, this is 1. Second is if you want to have a down counter, then what you will do? If you have a down counter, you should count like this. So if it is a down counter, let's have a C, B, 3 bit counter. This is count. So we have 0, 0, 0 initially. And when it is a down counter, it should go to 1, 1, 1. That means, if those, this goes, then it should be 1, 1, 0. Next count should be 6, 5. Four, three, then two, then one, and then zero. So this is a down counting. 
it should count like this. That means when A goes from 0 to 1, B goes from 0 to 1. When B goes from 0 to 1, C also goes. That means they are toggling. So on the positive edge of the clock, it is toggling. So this is 1, 1. So this, whenever the clock occurs, there will be a toggle at the first thing. So we can use J, we can use K, we can use anything. This is a facility we are using of a JK flip flop that both the inputs are kept 1. So whenever both the inputs are kept 1, it is going to, the output is going to toggle. Only when, when the clock edge occurs, active clock edge occurs. If you see here, whenever positive edge of the clock occurs, it is going to be changed. I can show you with the diagram also. So, when this edge changes, when it goes from 1 to 0, B will toggle. When B goes from 1 to 0, 0, 0 to 1, C will toggle. Again, A always, A is LSB, this always toggle. So, clock jo hai, wo humne LSB ko dena hai. First rule. This is 1 to 0, so this remains same, this also remains same. Then again, A goes from 0 to 1, toggles, that means this should toggle. 1 to 0. Okay? This should not toggle because it toggles only when it goes, B goes from 0 to 1. Then next, it goes from 1 to 0, so this remains same, this also remains same. Again, this goes from 0 to 1, so that means this should toggle. Toggles. This goes from 0 to 1, though this should also toggle. toggle. So this is basically a, a synchronous 3 bit a synchronous down So when you are giving the normal output of a flip flop as a clock to the next, as a negative edge clock to the next, it will occur, it will act as a asynchronous up count. And when you give the normal output as positive edge of the clock, then it will act, act as a down count. Fine. So I will make one table here. Normal output. Complement output. And then positive edge, negative edge. So when it is normal output on positive edge of the clock, it will act as a down counter. And when it is negative edge, it will act as a up counter. This is one rule. Then another rule is if instead of this, I give this as a clock. previous classes that we always talk about the normal output, we don't talk about the inverted outputs or the complement outputs. There is a provision that instead of giving this as a clock, you can give in complementary output as a clock to the next, as a clock edge to the next higher bit flip flop. So if, if D is 0, D bar is going to be 1. That means if D changes from 0 to 1, D bar should change from 1 to 0. So, kya hoga? What will be the counter? If you see, let's see what will be the output. We have A, B, C, D. What is the count? Output. All are 0, 0. 
so when this act as a clock that means if this is going to toggle every time this is going to toggle every time so if this is one there is a clock this toggles that means d is changing from 0 to 1 if d is changing from 0 to 1 then d bar is changing from 1 to 0 and if d bar changes from 1 to 0 that means this this is going to toggle that means it's this output will be one now if this output is one that means zero se one hua so that means this output goes from one to zero c bar is always come if this goes from one to zero that means this again this flip flop will toggle that means b output was zero it goes to one again when b goes from zero to one Its b bar will go from one to zero, and when b bar goes from one to zero, this flip flop will toggle. So this is what we get on the first count. This is one. Then this will toggle. Okay. It is this will toggle when d goes from zero to one, or d bar goes from. That means ये one to zero जा रहा है ये ऐसे ही रहेगा. Next में ये one हो. This goes from zero to one, so this will toggle. This grows from one to zero, so this remains as it is. So in this way, we are going to get a counter. That means if complement outputs are fed as negative edge, it will act as a down counter. So this was three bit asynchronous or mod eight. Us in bonus don't count. Mod means it has eight states. I'll draw that states. Let me finish with this. Next is this was one thing. So if I write it down like this, one one zero zero. So ये counter ये toggle करेगा. ये zero to one जाएगा तो ये करेगा. So let it be this. This is not changing. It will remain like this. Then one, this will toggle. It changes from zero to one, so this also changes from zero to one. This changes from zero to one, so this changes from one to zero. This changes from one to zero. This will remain same. This is same. This will same. This will no change. Then this will toggle zero to one, so this will also toggle. One to zero, no change. Then again, this will change. This will remain the same because on one to zero there is no change. So in this way, you can have a asynchronous down counter where the complement output is being fed as a clock to the next higher bit. Similarly, if I have this as the input as a positive clock edge. I have the facility of again A B C. It is A is this, B is medium, C is M S C. So what happens? Let's see. Let's make the truth table of a counter. This is the truth table of a counter. Simple. These are all zeros. So, on this is a clock. So, whenever there is a positive edge of the clock, positive edge, A will toggle. This will toggle. So, A toggles from A goes from zero to one. Always remember your LSB will always toggle. It toggles from zero to one. That means A bar toggles from one to zero. so it this will work this flip flop will toggle only when a bar changes from 0 to 1 but a bar is changing from 1 to 0 so output remains the this is there is no change so this remains then again a will always toggle since it is lsb see okay, this is lsb this is msb So next 
next what will happen when this changes from 1 to 0 what will happen that means a bar changes from 0 to 1 and when a bar changes from 0 to 1 next flip flop will talk that means this will be this changes from 0 to 1 now b changes from 0 to 1 so b bar changes from 1 to 0 so this will remain as it is Next again this toggles, A is changing from 0 to 1, that means A bar changes from 1 to 0, that means this flip flop remains same, output remains same and ugly the same way. Again this will toggle, A changes from 1 to 0, so A bar changes from 0 to 1, so that means B will toggle, so this will be, B changes from 1 to 0. So B bar changes from 0 to 1, clock edge is positive, that means it should change from, so this will. Then again this toggles, A changes from 0 to 1, so A bar changes from 1 to 0. So B remains same, this also remains same. Again this toggles, A toggles, when A changes from 1 to 0, A bar changes from 0 to 1, that means B toggles. When B changes from 0 to 1, B bar changes from 1 to 0. And when B bar changes from 1 to 0, that means C remains same. Then this toggles. Is A changes from 0 to 1, A bar changes from 1 to 0, that means negative clock edge. So this remains same. B is same, so C is also same. There is no change on B. That means there is no clock edge, it remains the same. Again this toggles, 1 to 0, this changes from 1 to 0, A. Because in the counter to table you will never have complement outputs. You will show in the table only the normal outputs. A bar changes from 0 to 1. When A bar changes from 0 to 1, that means this is going to complement. B ki value complement ho jayegi. B changes from 1 to 0, B bar changes from 0 to 1. That means there is a clock edge, so it is going to, again it is a repetition. So it counts 8 states, all the 8 states are distinct and it is a up counter. So this is what is a small thing which we come up with that if we have a positive edge of the clock, clock and the output is normal, our normal output is fed as a clock it is a down count first thing. If the positive edge of the clock is there and the complement output is fed as a clock to the next higher bit of flip clock then it will be set as a up count. Similarly, if the clock is negative edge triggered and the normal output is fed as a clock to the next higher bit flip flop then it acts as a up count. And similarly, on the same lines if negative edge of the clock is there and the complementary output is fed as a clock to the next higher bit flip clock, then it is present. So there are these are the ways of making a up counter and a down counter. Let's make the timing diagram. So I am going to make a timing diagram now. I have made an up and down counter. clock pulse, second edge of the clock pulse, third edge of the clock pulse, fourth edge of the clock pulse, fifth edge of the clock pulse, sixth edge, seventh edge, I can rub this off. I want more space. Eight 
eight o'clock to seven to eight. I need this space. Let's find out. Let me have three outputs. So A is A, B and C. I'm drawing this. On the negative edge of the clock pulse, initially all are zero. Initially all are zero. This is for when the normal output is set as a clock to the next higher. So A is initially 0. So whenever the negative edge comes, it becomes, it toggles. Whenever the negative edge comes, it toggles. Whenever the negative edge comes, it toggles. So you can see that on every negative edge of the clock, it is toggling. Then B toggles when negative edge of the A flip flop comes. This is the negative edge of the A flip flop. So B should toggle. So we'll have B negative edge of the clock comes. This is another. So this is the negative edge of A. So this toggles on the negative edge of A. I can draw the for you. We have A. Let me draw it with T. This is the So when negative edge of the clock comes, this is it toggles. So this is what is uh, this is what I am drawing. So when negative edge of B comes, C will toggle. So when negative edge of B comes, this is negative edge of B. This is negative edge of B. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 0. So this remains 0 till negative edge comes. Initially all the flip flops are. Then when negative edge comes, it becomes 1. When negative edge comes, it becomes 0. So we have You can see all the states. In 8 clock pulses, you are able to have all the 8 states. Only thing is, every next counter has to wait for the previous counter output to give a clock pulse. So we have the states 0, 0, 0. All the 8 states are distinct. 0, 0, 1, then 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1, and then 0. So this is what is a up counter where we have clock pulses, eight clock pulses, which are able to generate a count of eight from zero to seven. So this is a synchronous up counter, which is designed using T flip flops because T has when T is one it will always toggle, and this can be done using this. Only thing is. Wait for the delay of this counter to toggle this. Wait for the delay of this counter to toggle this. You have to wait for the counter delay. The swift flop delay. This delay aega jab ek isko 1 0 dega to ye chalega. Jab ye 1 0 dega to ye chalega. So it's like a ripple. It is waiting for a clock from this output. This is waiting for a clock from this output. And clock will come when this changes from 1 to 0. 
So it is a ripple effect. That is why it is called ripple control, like a ripple carry adder. We had a ripple carry adder where the carry out of one is fed as a carry into the other. So it waits. The carry it has to be rippled to the next state. That is why it is called ripple counter or a synchronous counter, in which the flip all the flip flop they are not in synchronization with the clock. Only the LSV is in synchronization with the clock, not others. And the output of the lowest flip flop, it is fed as a in clock to the next higher bit flip flop. The output of that flip flop is fed as a clock to the next higher bit flip flop. In this way, this is a chain. So you can have a mod two, mod four, mod eight, mod sixteen, mod thirty two. These many flip flops only. It is also called divide by eight counter. Because because the frequency is actually being divided by eight, you can see that if this is this whole pulse, this is the actually time period of the pulse. It is two nanosecond. If you have a just a single, it just divides the frequency by two. This will become four nanosecond. One period is four nanosecond. So that means if the time period increases, its frequency decreases. Frequency is one by t. What is t? It is time period. Time period of the clock was. One by two. Frequency for A is one by what is four. Frequency for B will be one by this is this is eight nanosecond. One by eight and frequency for C will be one by sixteen. If it is two, it is divided by actually divided by eight. So it is also called divide by eight a synchronous counter. It is also called mod eight a synchronous counter. But you should know whether it should be it is up counter or a down counter. It is designing design using whether T flip flop or J K flip flop or what. So this is all about a synchronous counters. So we have another lecture. We'll be talking about B C D counters in that. What are B C D counters? B C D means it will count from zero to nine. And we'll also talk about few more. How can you have counters in which you don't have to rest for something? Suppose I want a mod five counter. I want a mod eleven counter. How will I design those counters? And is there a pr proposition that we can design this counter using D flip flops? Can we do that? That is also possible. That is also possible. Thank you.